This element is unique in the periodic table, element 117, UUS, because it's never been observed in any form at all. On the 5th of April, which is just a few days ago, there was a really, really quite key paper accepted into a, a physics journal. Essentially told us that some folk in Russia, in Dubna, um, had managed to, to make a new element. Here on my computer screen, let's bring up the periodic table. So this is the periodic table as we know it. All of the groups, all of the periods, right the way down to number 118. There's only one element which isn't coloured. Okay, so it doesn't belong to an S, P, D or F block. Hasn't been identified. And that's element number 117. So this paper, which is published by folk from the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, claim to have produced a small number of atoms of element number 117. No, no, it's really exciting because it's, it's, it's the generation of new matter. You know, it's almost like a chill goes up your spine. It's like, wow, something new, something really exciting. It's, it's, it's almost akin to, to, to the announcement of Nobel Prizes and, and celebration of good science. So, yeah, it's a really exciting time. The element 117 is a synthetic element. What this means is that it's not stable or it's not found naturally on the planet, okay? So all of the elements with, with um, atomic number greater than that of uranium are non-stable. They all decay or they, they undergo radioactive decay processes. And 117 is one of these. Now, if we want to study the chemistry of any of these higher or super heavy elements, we actually have to make them. And we have to make them using linear accelerators and very, very fast accelerator technologies. Now, you might remember Martin did a video when he went to the linear accelerator facility in Germany and he told us a little bit about an analogy about how you make these new atoms or these new elements and his analogy was really with snow so he made a snowball and he threw some snow the snowball at a tree or a target which already had some snow on it and the lump of snow on the tree got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so what these guys have done is they've taken a target which in this case is berkelium. It's a synthetic material which was made in the United States. It took a tremendous amount of effort to make this material in itself, but that's a completely different story. And they took this berkelium, which incidentally has a half-life of oh, somewhere in the order of 270 days, I think. In fact, no, it's 320 days, they had the half-life of berkelium. So these experiments had to be done pretty quickly after the berkelium had been made. It was then transferred to the, to the Russian group who formed a target. So a target is a bit like a CD or a disc. It's nice and flat and circular and it rotates inside a beam. And that beam is really what the accelerator does because it takes ions, and in this case, in the Dubna case in Russia, these are calcium ions. So these are calcium-20 with lots and lots of neutrons, so 48 calcium. And it shoots a very fast beam of these ions directly at the target. Now they impact and hopefully they undergo fusion and they generate the new atom or the new element. You might assume that these experiments might take a very long period of time. And this is true because the time taken in Dubna was something of the order of between five and seven months to prepare just six atoms of this new material. So a quite fantastic effort and a quite fantastic research program involving world leading scientists from the Oak Ridge National Laboratories and also the Dubna Laboratories in, in, in Russia. What's going to happen with the name now, by the way? Well, the name of the element, wow, that's a fantastic question, isn't it? Because already it has a Latin name, Unupseptium, 117, okay? And this really is a placeholder in the periodic table. So the process now is that somebody has to verify these results. And once the result has been verified, an open discussion will be held and that will be moderated by our UPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, in the same way that a new name came up with Copernicium in the past. So at the moment, many people, especially those in Russia, will start to use Mendeleev's naming convention for gaps within the periodic table. And Mendeleev would have called this material Ica astatine, because astatine is the element above it in the periodic table. I'm really not sure who will actually give the name to this material because this was a, a true collaboration between world-renowned scientists in both the United States and also in Russia. 
So I dare say that they'll have a, a powwow around the table and they'll come up with a very nice name. This evidence or this, this kinetic evidence is fantastic. Very, very good supporting evidence for, this, for commonly held theories of islands of stability where new elements may well be discovered with much, much higher atomic mass. And these would be over and above the recognised or the accepted top value in our table of 118. The new element, 117, it's an interesting element and we could perhaps suggest things about its chemistry by looking at the periodic table. So if we look at the periodic table, we can see that it sits quite happily in a group which we know as the halogens. So it sits below fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and acetine. So we know right away that it's going to want to form an anion. It's going to want to take an extra electron from an electron donor. But what will the element look like? Well, in its bulk form, I would guess, looking at the periodic table, it would be metal or metalloid, and it would probably be very dark and lustrous, so it would be shiny but quite dark. But we have to make more than six.